Hello, everyone. Welcome to the TSC weekly call. Uh, as you all know, I'm sure we have, uh, you must be aware of the antitrust policy and the code of conduct as a condition to participating in these meetings. This is all to keep us out of trouble. So, as I said, we have a fairly light agenda, uh, as I said in my email, but uh, we'll see how much it takes to get through this. So let's first start with a couple of uh, announcements. The first one is the weekly developer newsletter that I'm sure you're all aware of by now, you should be. And then I just wanted to highlight the TSC election that started. And so the nomination period is open. I saw several people have already nominated themselves or some of their colleagues. And so, so um, yeah, get to it. The game is on. And uh, the nomination period ends, what is September 19, if I remember correctly? 17th. I'm sorry, what? September what? Yeah, oh, September sorry. 17 is when nominations close. So you have until then. Still have time to think about it if you're on the fence. But I hope uh, to see everybody back. We already know that two of our colleagues are not going to be here again. So there's anyway, some room for new blood, which you know I uh, look forward to seeing. It's always good to get new people on board. All right, with that done, let's go through. Uh, well, is there any other announcements anybody wants to make first? See any hands raising, so I assume not. All right, um, let's get to the quarterly reports. So we still have the grid and transact reports from last week. And in addition, we got the Chilo report that was added this week. Thank you, Bawa, for submitting this. I don't think there is any issues that need discussing now, but uh, this is your chance to tell me otherwise. Is there anything anybody wants to discuss on those reports? I guess not. All right then. Ah, Arun. Hey, yeah. So um, on this, Seller, right? So that was a newly added report. So I just wanted to confirm if from the seller team, if the new labs proposal team, did they reach out to seller? Um, I, I remember there were comments on the labs proposal where they already had fabric operators available and seller had a roadmap of supporting 2.2 LTS release. And there was a suggestion, maybe there is collaboration possible and they could just reuse some of the contents from here. Okay, so thanks for bringing that up. I mean, as far as I know, the stewards, I assume you, that's what you're referring to when you see the labs team. I mean, they don't necessarily get involved beyond commenting on the proposal. I, for one, highlight this kind of opportunity for collaboration. Maybe it's my bad, but I usually leave it to them to decide whether to do so or not. Uh, so I haven't done anything beyond that, but uh, I suppose it's a good opportunity to ask the Chelo team or Bawa in this case, if they are aware of this lab and maybe they can have a look into it. Yeah, I have, uh, I, I, know, I know this uh, lab, but uh, I don't have the chance to look into the detail of this uh, lab project. Okay. Yeah. And I know there are quite a few of those uh, Kubernetes operators in the works. And so I, uh, I know that when the lab was proposed, I also pointed out all the possible connection. So, as when we have this, I mean, 
there is no rule preventing labs from overlapping with one another. But uh, so that alone is not, you know, reason for the steward to say, no, sorry, you can't do this. But uh, we definitely, you know, try to highlight the points of connections or overlap. So to encourage collaboration as much as possible. Yeah, a quick question to Anu. So uh, any special reason you highlight this uh, uh, operator lab? Arun. Uh, yeah, I, I saw in your report that you have a roadmap of supporting 2.2 LTS release. And I also had seen the similar status for the previous quarterly report. So probably I felt that like reusing some of this code could speed up this effort. Okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, if you look at the thread of comments on the on the lab proposal, um, I had pointed out that in Cello, there is an operator. And so it would make sense to for them to look into it. They say, well, it seems like the Cello operator is kind of far behind. It's, it's old and outdated. And I say, okay, that's possible, but then maybe you should work with them to maybe have Cello project, you know, uh, upgrade their operator by using yours, if yours is newer and better. And so that's one thing you could look into, Bawa. Yeah, um, so, you know, in the previous uh, release or channel, there's uh, uh, another implementation to support uh, Kubernetes. And yeah. uh, in our new release plan, there's uh, no such kind of feature. Maybe we can reach the operator team to see if it's possible to integrate their Kubernetes support into the channel project. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you for the discussion. All right. So I think that's it for the reports then. I still haven't heard from uh, Silas on Borrow, I'm sorry to say. So uh, we'll probably have to ping him again. Usually he's good at responding to say, oh, sorry, I don't have time right now, but I'll get to it. And this time I didn't get any response. So I am not sure what to think, but we'll see. Maybe he's so swamped that he can't even tell me he's swamped. <laughs> Hey Arno, I have a, a a call with Casey coming up next week. So, and I did ask him to to uh, get back to you. So, um, all right, I'll that'd chase, be great. I'll chase, yeah, I'll chase that down for you. Yep, thank you. If you have the opportunity, that'd be great. Thanks. All right, so let's move on now to the discussion. I mean, as I said, the main discussion item for today's agenda is this uh, issue that was raised. Uh, when we were talking about the, uh, you know, uh, what should be taken into consideration for entering incubation, uh, as part of the discussion, it triggers some thought uh, that maybe some of the exit criteria from incubation could also use a little bit of uh, an update. And so Arun started this, and some of us discussed and commented on what he had put together. And I think I didn't have time to read through the details, but I understand Arun, you made some updates just before the call. Can you walk her through what's the status? Right, so what I, and thanks Tracy for pointing out in detail and giving all those pointers. And there were two major comments on, on this page. And one of them was on the checklist to be prepared and Tracy pointed out, hey, we already have a checklist for that community architects follow in case of a release. So we should probably create one more checklist, something similar to that. So I copied Ditto, that same whatever Tracy has pasted in the proposal. And the other comment that you pointed out was, hey, um, is in this case, all we need to do is just add this one line over there saying that the project should meet um, the criteria for uh, 
one of the thing that we should add is the repository structure. So again, thanks Tracy for pointing that section in the TSC charter. We probably will add this in that in that place. Um, yeah, just a concern or a question from my end would be: we are not specifying any timelines over here for repository structure. Do we? So I, I believe when we prepare the checklist, we probably could also come up with timelines for each of those checklist items. Um, yeah. Yes. So I, I have to say, I don't quite understand that idea because I mean, the checklist, it's like, well, they must all be checked to qualify to exit incubation. So these, you know, there's, there's no timeline per se, because it's like, well, either you can check the box or you cannot apply for to, to exit incubation. Tracy? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I don't know, I think the other comment that I had related to this was that the checklist that I had uh, put together with those four kind of items was just a, here's some ideas off the top of my head. I don't know if it's complete or not. Um, so we may want to think whether or not there's other things that we want to add um, that need to be completed when a project graduates. But I, um, you know, obviously we've done this, what, six times already or something like that. So, yeah. um, I, and I know that the Hyperledger staff is, is really good at uh, making sure that people recognize that things have moved from incubation to graduate it so um you know i really i think <laughs> and sorry right i think in my checklist most of the items probably fell for uh the community architects or for uh the the pr group so um i don't know if there's anything else that we we want to include in that checklist but uh that's i guess the only thing i wanted to add all right thanks does that make sense arun Sure. So from that point of view, I mean, all we should be doing is, you know, see if there are check, check boxes that we want to add, modify, or possibly remove, but I doubt that's the case, you know, from the list we have. And, you know, these are like, as far as I remember, the exit criteria is just like, yeah, you must have those things. And this is, you know, don't even bother applying if you don't have all these boxes checked. Yes, hot. Hey, yeah, so I just wanted to comment that I think this is in a lot better shape. I think we're doing pretty well there, here, and this is in a lot better shape than the uh, move to incubation in the first place. All of our uh, projects that have requested uh, a move uh, to exit incubation, you know, have sort of known what was going on. It's been a very streamlined process. Uh, they've all gotten it, and it's it's there. There hasn't been a lot of friction in the process, or any sort of misunderstandings uh, like there have been for proposals for getting into incubation. Um, so I think this is in much better shape than that. Yeah, I, I think there's one case that didn't go through. It's Explorer. They have applied, and we've said, "Well, oh, you're you right. I'm sorry. The, you don't need the diversity." Uh, requirement and uh, they fairly recently said they were talking about possibly applying again but I haven't seen anything happening yet so I don't know if there's still something they're considering or not but I agree with your characterization of the situation and I think we obviously worked quite a bit on this in the past and it shows and like you said, and like entering incubation where basically we had nothing. Here we have a pretty decent list. We, uh, for those who are new and haven't worked on this, I can tell you we 
there were a lot of discussions in the past as to how trying to make those as objective as possible. And we recognized that we couldn't have it completely objective. There were some cases like, you know, the diversity criteria and so on that still could be, you know, seen as not completely uh, as objective, but for the most part, I think they are. And uh, people have been, I agree with what Hart said. It's just like people seem to have a pretty good understanding of what's expected when they look into it. So let's, I, I, I propose we go through your list here, Arun, and, and discuss one by one whether, you know, there's something we agree to do or, or not. Does that make sense? I mean, right. I just realized that I should not have added following statement. It should rather be just, um, yeah, I, I missed that following statement. It's, it's in the Tracy's comment on the comment section that needs to be copied under that. So the first section is just uh, introducing common repository structure. As I said, this was brought up during entry considerations discussion. And uh, the reason it was probably brought out was it was never documented in, in exit criteria. So we just introduced the class under infrastructure saying that hey, you should meet this for you to consider exit from integration. Okay, does anybody disagree with that? Basically, we're saying we should add to the criteria that people should be compliant with the common repository structure. Okay, so I assume for now at least that everybody agrees with doing that. Let's go to the next one. I mean, the fact that it's in infrastructure section or not is kind of a detail, it's almost editorial as far as I'm concerned, but uh, it seems like this is a good place to have it. I mean, we already did do talk as uh, has been pointed out that, you know, we already talk about some of the files that are expected to be found. So it's only logical to add to this, the reference to the common repository structure. So let's go to the next point then. So what is this about? Can you expand on what your thinking is here? Sure, so um, I mean, my idea during, when we were discussing incubation entry considerations, there was a section where we said, it would be good if we have a checklist where somebody can consider going through them and know whether they're accepted or not. And there was also a thought flowing around saying that, do we have something similar for exit considerations? And that's when this item was brought in. And these points that you see uh, were added by Tracy, probably I'll let Tracy pitch in as well. Okay, but so now we actually, this is more of a, like a process slash implementation aspect, right? In terms of the exit criteria themselves, there is nothing else that you suggest we add. That is correct. Okay. So let me ask first, you know, to the group, is there anything else anybody thinks we need to add? I mean, I wouldn't expect you to make that up of top of your head now. It's maybe something you have thought about. Hey, by the way, this is something we should right? we should have. If not, it probably means that you know you haven't thought about this, and that's okay. All right, so let's talk about this idea now. So I I have to say, I mean, so the checklist again. We if you look at the way. You know, maybe I wonder if we have the example like the last uh, project to graduate, I believe, was Indy or Aries. And they did a pretty good job at filling out the application. And typically, people have, you know, taken the, the list from the exit criteria 
and literally, you know, started from this and responded, added, you know, information around those points, explaining whether they, you know, sometimes with checkbox and some comments as to how they comply or as they meet the criteria. So is there another checklist that you're thinking of? Because there I see some items to consider adding to a checklist. This is more, again, like, that's not for the applicant, right? This is, this is kind of more to document what's supposed to happen when people graduate. Right. If, I, I yeah, if someone else <laughs> wants to drive, I can, someone else can, like Arno, if you want to show what you're thinking of, I can give the floor to you. I'm sorry, what are you asking me to do? Uh, well, you were talking about previous checklists and what about this and what about that? And I- I don't know, but uh, we're we are on that checklist there. Uh, you were looking at it actually, Tracy has a hand up, but I, 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 we were fine with the, what you were showing. Tracy? Yeah, so Arno, just to clarify, I think what the, the idea here is, is that currently we have a checklist for when a project enters incubation, right? The community architects follow a, a particular set of items. They obviously need to make sure they're creating chat channels and mailing lists and uh, that PR is happening, that we did this new thing, right? We, we added this new project to Hyperledger, um, so on and so forth, right? I think what Arun is asking here is for there to be a similar checklist when we have a project enter uh, grad graduated state, right? So when a project goes into graduated state, what are the steps that need to be taken? They're probably a lot less, right? Because we don't need to do all the infrastructure type setup um, from, from you know repos to mailing lists to chat channels to whatever else needs to be created. Um, but we do have to do some things. And when I say we, that's the royal we um, and mostly mm -hmm. falling on Hyperledger staff uh, members to, to complete the, the things that need to be done, right? Um, the same way as I think most of this stuff has to happen um, by Hyperledger staff when a project enters incubation as well. Right? I think from the TSC perspective, it's very much a, um, yay or nay, right? We, we vote to say whether or not something graduates or um, or or not, right? And then uh, after that, we were kind of hands off. And so yeah. I think the confusion here, right, is maybe, is it really the TSE's responsibility to state to the staff what they need to do when a project graduates or, or not? Um, so that's, that's probably, I think probably what's causing some of the confusion uh, that, that you're asking about. Yes, I agree. I mean, thank you for explaining this. This is exactly the point I was trying to drive to. So uh, you said it much better than I was trying to do. So thank you. Um, but so uh, Aaron, you agree with that characterization that Tracy just gave us, right? Right, I, I see this point, right? And probably we cannot I believe I'm sorry, what? I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think if there was something else that the reason why I added this. So okay. I definitely remember this was during those conversations when we were having entry considerations and uh, just keep a note of things that we said, okay, let us consider this as an amendment to exit criteria instead. So that's when I made a note of it. Um, right, so I, I think there's a distinction between, I mean, for the entry considerations, we added at the end, like these best practices kind of, they were more like hints for the applicants on things to do to increase their chances, right? It was these ideas like, well, 
there are things we know from experience that help you know people succeed and so why don't we share this capture a few bullets of things that people might consider doing and and if there is something equivalent there i think that would make sense for us to 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 add a section like this i don't know off the top of my head that there are things we i would know what to put there but you know it would be logical that we have something similar to what we put in the entry considerations on the other hand to to you know what you're talking about specifically in that on your on that wiki page the proposal right here it is more you know what tracy was talking about what the staff is expected to do and i mean so far except for the election which clearly is a case where we have a full documentation of what the staff is supposed to do and we just approved that and we are going through this now where they basically have to follow the the, the, the set of instructions that have been agreed upon with certain times and so for the rest i'm not aware of us having ever basically dictated the, how they do it or even if you don't want to make it sound so bad uh, more like just documenting and maybe you could say well i think it would be good to document what the staff is expected to do and uh, you know but this is a bit of a different exercise than, you know, revising the exit criteria per se. And if, if, we, if we were to start doing this, I think this is, you know, a pretty major undertaking that this is just a small portion of, of what we would have to document if we want to start documenting what the staff is supposed to do. In general, you know, what are they supposed to do when what? when like a whole bunch of events happen if this happens the staff is supposed to do this this and that I, so I, I agree and i see what you're trying to convey and thanks tracy for pointing that out yeah probably it doesn't make sense for us to add this clause the point number two in that case and definitely we should not be doing it so let me ask i mean does that make sense? Anybody wants to get into this? I guess nobody's raising their hand. So the answer is no. I would say, I mean, I don't know if maybe we have not come across any such case, but maybe when there is a case where, hey, TSA cannot do anything about this apart from this, but it is a must thing to be done for a project and it's all in hands of let's say community architects or the staff maybe that those things we can consider but on top of my mind i cannot think of anything any case like that as of now all right all right so i think we so this proposal is much more simple now basically the it comes down to you know adding the section that tracy has updated thank you for doing that tracy you know regarding the uh, the 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 uh, struct the common repository structure is there anything else we should consider so I would suggest you strike this section two now, then we can just you know, approve the rest of the proposal. And if, you know, if anybody feels at some point that we should get into documenting what the staff or community architects are supposed to do or expected to do, I think this should be addressed in a, you know, independently in a different, uh, as a different item, hot. I mean, I don't think we need to necessarily tell the staff what to do. I think sort of like the um, the intuition behind this proposal is sort of you know you need to reach out to the staff, which I think is a good people or sorry, which is a good thing to tell people. But um, but I don't see any reason why we need to like you know tell the staff how they specifically have to handle stuff like this. 
And I don't know, I mean, we can ask the staff, we have several members here and then uh, former members. I mean, I imagine you guys do have some kind of documentation for certain things you do just because for practical purposes, when you have to pass over some responsibility, it's kind of useful to say, hey, this is what you're supposed to do. You know, let me know if you have any questions. I don't know if you have written this kind of stuff out, but I don't know that it needs to be published as part of official documentation for that matter. We do have internal checklists. Uh, I guess we can go to the... Uh... So we do have checklists that are in progress, et cetera. Um, and these are the, the big one, you know, FMR, new project. All that we do have best practices for documented. We do have internal how to articles as well. So we, we do have documentation for this. All right. Perfect. That's that's what I thought. Um, and so that's something that only the staff sees this, right? Showing us right now. I mean, we were showing. I don't think we have access to that. Yeah, that's a private space, a private yeah, working yeah. space. And, and I mean, that's fine with me. You know? I'm not trying to say there's anything wrong, <laughs> but you give us a glimpse of something that we normally are not supposed to see, I suppose. Although I don't know that it's meant to be hidden per se, but it's uh, just not designed to be public info, that's all. Right, it's not, uh, <laughs> what I do here is not super secret. And, you know, right. Tracy has done it all. So it, it, it's just documentation for, for us. I mean, it's not like, it's not rude. You know, we're not doing anything, you know, terrible. It's just documentation for us. All right. So, I mean, unless anybody wants them to start opening this up and start reviewing it, I think we can leave it alone. So again, I su suggest we, uh, we update the current proposal, remove the section two and approve that. And then we can update the execute area accordingly and we can call it done. Does that sound like a plan? Arun, does that work for you? Yes, so I just updated it. Maybe if you refresh, it should reflect. All right, there you go. Thank you. All right, so I uh, propose we approve the proposal as currently edited. Second. Thank you. All right, um, so let's do a quick vote. Anybody agreeing, say hi. 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 All right, anybody who wants to oppose? I don't hear anyone. Very good. Anybody wants to be marked as abstaining? All right, hearing none, this is your by approve. So I, I created you. a I created a PR for this already. So uh, it's in the chat channel. Please at least two people approve it so we can merge it. Perfect. Thank you, Tracy. Super fast. Very cool. All right. So back to the agenda. This was it. I was hoping we would be able to get that done fairly quickly. I my wish is <laughs> you know, the full field. Uh, so, but is there anything else anybody wants to bring up now? I do want to point out again, as I pointed out before, that we have other items in the backlog. Some of these, like the restructure of the greenhouse, 
I think will soon be uh, taken care of because the task force in charge of doing that is completing its work. And so things like this will be easy to close. Others are basically pending action from some people who said, and Arun, your name is on the top of my mind when I say that because, and it's not to, you know, point finger at you in particular, but, uh, oh, you know, imply any fault because you're one of the most active uh, members but uh, we we I we did some house cleaning a while ago and I tried to close some of this and people said oh we shouldn't close this I'll do this before we can move forward and so those items are pending these actions to be taken otherwise they just sit there which isn't the best so I saw Dano raising his hand first so on the DC on pseudonyms, that was supposed to go to legal. Has anything moved on that? Or do we just need to make the policy um, recommendation ourselves? This is a good question. I, when I saw it the other day, I was like, man, this thing, I mean, this is, I'll be honest. To me, this is a failure from uh, Brian Billendorf. He has the ball on this one. He, has, he, he said he would take care of it, Look, discuss it with legal. And so we have been waiting for him to get back to us on this. And uh, Daniela, Brian not being here, mm -hmm. I, uh, I would suggest you bring it back to Brian and remind him that we'd like to have an update as to the status of this and or if okay. they have given up okay. what we're supposed um, to do. I will we'll get a status update for you by the next meeting, if not before. So I think we could do a proposal that would be compliant with whatever the lawyers come um, if we were to talk about it. I think it's one that would satisfy most people, but I don't know. We need, we need clarity on that for sure. Okay, well, we'll uh, get that back to you. Yeah, no, I mean, Dano, if you have some idea that, you know, feel free to make a proposal that you think would, you know. Oh, I had three proposals in there. None of them come up for a vote. Uh, yes, None I know. <laughs> the one that I think is the... The one okay. that I think, I'm sorry, go ahead, Dana. The one that I think has the most legs is to say that there must be a real name signing it. Um, and that could be a maintainer. And if a maintainer is signing it, knowing it's like terms two and three that has been submitted properly, and they put their real name on it, they know who the other person is, and that should be acceptable. Um, so that way, anonymous people would only need to unmask basically to the maintainer. And the maintainer then would need to take the liability of putting their real name on the signature. I think that's the best way to address it. If this is anonymous contributors not willing to unmask to the maintainer, then we can't accept their contribution. I think it's where it needs to go. That sounds reasonable to me. I mean, but I remember we had these discussions and so, I don't know. Let's wait to see what Brian says, but I think uh, I, you know, we should try to close this one way or another. So look for that to come back to the agenda once we heard back from Brian. I hope he doesn't stall us saying, eh, I'll get back to you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dano, for bringing that one up. Is, is there any others that people feel, you know, uh, strongly about? It'll be a good time to bring those back up. Anything you can do to resurrect the discussion, revive the discussion is good. Otherwise, I think we should try and close this because it doesn't serve any purpose to have those things just stalling there. All right, so I'm not gonna keep this longer than it needs to be. Dano, you still have your hand up. Is that just left over or? Okay. All right, so. Unless there is anything else anybody wants to bring up now, I'm happy to close the call early. Doesn't open that often. Nobody complains when we do. So I don't see any hands coming up. Calling once, calling twice. All right, we'll call it a day then. Thank you all for joining and uh, we'll talk again next week. Goodbye all. Bye.